Manscape is proudly brought to you by Atla, the champions of lightweight luggage, Donna Faccioni personal training, and the fitness generation. G'day and welcome to another episode of Manscape, a TV program about all things man, coming to you from the Sandbar Beach Cafe in Middle Park. That's right, Robbie. Now listen up, guys, because we've got some great tips to keep you on the right path to looking good and feeling great. And speaking of feeling great, let's kick things off with some useful tips on keeping fit from our resident personal trainer, Donna. personal training tips with Donna Ficcioni. G'day Donna. Hello, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about your background first of all as a personal trainer. Okay, I've um, been in the industry about 12 years and pretty much come from being very unfit and not doing anything uh, to basically doing it for myself and wanting to know a little bit more about the fitness industry and now it's basically my life. So I do it every day, it's a full-time job. And we're talking about training outdoors today yeah, in, a, in a park setting, which is just beautiful. Right. First of all, how important is warming up? Extremely important. Um, it's basically starts off your session. Okay, so for the body to recover well after the session and also to, to be warmed up for the body of what you're actually gonna do um, and it, it prevent injury, you know, um, we all need to do it. You need to do a warm up to make sure that your body is ready for what you're actually gonna do. Leg lifts, okay, walking leg lifts all the way to your next length. Let's go. Flex your feet, keep your knees as straight as possible. That's it, chest high, look forward. When you get to your second post, bring yourselves back. And how long should you warm up for? Again, it depends, you know, look, really on the session that you're doing, but for me and my boot camps, at least 15 minutes. Okay, I, I make it a point to make sure that the guys go through at least 15 minutes of warm up, yeah. And tell me about a few of the warm ups that you're doing today. Okay, so because the body, the content of the actual um, session is stair runs and fitness boxing, um, I get them to mimic the exercises. So basically what they would do is uh, a couple of stair runs to start off, and then we do some body weight exercises, and that's where we bring in lunges and, you know, a little bit of push-ups, um, jumping squats, that sort of thing, just to get the body you know ready for it and also using the legs because it is the you know your biggest muscle group and you've got to warm them up yeah all right so we're doing stair runs today we are, yep. now tell me what are the benefits of stair runs um, well considering how steep they are um, fantastic for your glutes for your quads um, and obviously to increasing your cardio so you know it's all going to get your heart racing um, and warm the body up but definitely for how hard they are the stairs really work your legs so and they're fantastic for building muscle burning fat and that's what we want to do the more muscle you have the more fat you'll burn Okay, so what I want you to do, two stair runs. So straight up, right across, come down the second one, straight back to here. You're gonna do it twice, okay? Warming up your body, getting yourself ready for your body weight exercises. Beautiful, pace yourselves. Fantastic, and across. Okay, when you get back here, just relax, have a drink. Beautiful, fantastic, that's it. Just relax your bodies. And just tell us a little bit about what you're doing with the boys today in terms of the stair runs. Okay, so basically I put them through some drills. What it is is they'll do an exercise first, so they might do high kicks or knees or you know a jumping squat and then they'll do a stair run. So in between, obviously, the exercise itself. So the body weight exercise, add the stair run on, on the end um, and then continue that process going, yeah. Well, that is fantastic advice, thank you very much. Okay. If people want more information, they can head to our website or our Facebook page okay. and we will speak to you again soon. Beautiful. Now we're talking styling today for those blokes out there who like to look sharp. And with me is our special guest, Sally McKinnon. Now Sally, you're a personal stylist and a wardrobe consultant. What exactly do you do? So as a personal stylist, I work with everyday regular men and women to help improve their, their personal style. So my clients are regular people with regular budgets who are looking for advice on how to better dress for their body shapes, for their lifestyles and on their budgets. And part of my job is also to take people shopping. So um, as a personal stylist, it's about finding people um, a, a style and helping them improve their style for their day to day lifestyle but importantly working within the budget that they, that they set. So what sort of bloke hires the services of a personal stylist? 
Um, my clients are quite varied. I've had um, university students, uh, retirees, professionals, tradesmen to CEOs. Um, really, it's the sort of guy that's looking for independent, objective um, advice on how to improve their personal style. So, um, a client doesn't need to have a lot of money. It's not big budget stuff. So, most clients have fairly modest budgets, but they're just looking for the right advice to make sure they're on the right track. So, you go into people's homes and you go through their wardrobe. So, how would a male client benefit from your wardrobe edit service? One of the great benefits of the wardrobe edit service is that you get to learn about what actually suits your shape and your body type. So body shape's not all, not just for women, you know, it's really important that guys learn about what um, different styles and cuts work for their body type and their proportions. So I teach guys how to uh, put outfits together, what works for their shapes, what, what doesn't. Uh, it's also a really good opportunity to help perhaps declutter the wardrobe, um, perhaps encourage someone to get rid of something that they've been holding on to for a little bit too long. Um, and ultimately they also come away with knowing perhaps what gaps are in their wardrobe. So sometimes um, a guy might have a really great wardrobe but there might be just be a few key pieces missing and I can recommend what it is that they need to, to go and get and, and specifically I can give, you, give them the sorts of stores to go to. Okay, so let's just go and have a look at my wardrobe. Okay. Well here it is, the masterpiece, what do you think? Very nice, very organised wardrobe, I like it already. Well, I knew you were coming. So Sally, tell me what exactly happens with a wardrobe edit? So firstly what I need to do is sit down with the client and determine what their personal needs are. So learn about what they do for a living, what their day-to-day -day lifestyle entails, what their needs are, um, the sorts of places that they would typically shop and the, sorts of, the sort of budget I guess they have for, for shopping. Then we hit the wardrobe and I literally go through piece by piece um, and getting a client mostly to try things on. So one question I would often start off with is getting asking the client if they can show me a favourite piece of theirs. So have you got something that's a favourite of yours, Robbie? Yeah, look, I'll steer clear of golf days, but I'll, I'll go with this one. This is probably my favourite shirt at the moment. Yep. What do you think? Can I really keep it? Really nice. I would say so. I think it's a really lovely looking shirt. It's got a lovely contrasting collar. It's modern. It looks like it's got a really nice tapered fit, which is really modern for guys. But to be absolutely sure, I'd need you to try it on for me. So what do you think? Is it a keeper or am I taking it to the side? Uh, definitely a keeper. I really like that shirt. It's a really nice fit on you. Really flattering style. Fits your shoulders in um, really, really well, which is really important for a men's shirt. You don't want it to be too bi billowy and baggy. Nice and tapered through the body, which is the most modern cut for men's clothing. And quite a versatile shirt. You know, you've got this beautiful button down collar, which is quite dressy. So you could wear this with a really nice pair of say dark denim jeans, maybe grab some your nice dark brown loafers and it's a nice smart casual look. Alternatively you can even wear it with a suit. I can see you've got a nice navy navy suit here, great with the colours. So no, I think it's a really really nice shirt. Fantastic, well there's so much information that you've provided us today. Yes. How am I going to take it all in? Well, of course, there is a lot of information um, given during the wardrobe edit. So what I do afterwards is all the advice, all the style do's and don'ts, all the rules, I type up for my clients afterwards and send it through, I call it a style plan. So it's a really specific, really tailored individual plan of attack. So that the next time that a client might be looking through their own wardrobe or maybe hitting the shops, they've got all those rules at hand to help make them, um, help them make better purchases. It sounds just so easy and I get to keep my shirt. So here are some home cooking tips from professional chef Steve from Sandbar in Albert Park. Steve, what do you have for us today? Look, this is the quickest and easiest chicken stock you'll ever, ever see. This is one that when you get home on a Friday night or something like that, you can just make this. You've got soup ready to go for the weekend. So, as you can see, some onions. Again, using that safe cooking tip from last week some celery, just rough, very, very rough, some parsley stalks, just throw that all into the pot, rough as you like, it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter, just as rough as you like, into the pot, just some chicken frames, available at any, uh, any butcher, soup market, they've all, they've all got them, fill that with cold water, 
pop that on the stove, boil it for an hour, and voila, that's chicken stock. So easy, there you go. We'll see you next week. Insight and advice on life issues with Ben Angel. Hi, G'day, Adam. Ben. Now, this week, we're talking about success and failure. Why are some men super successful and others just bomb out completely? <laughs> well, it's really around how we perceive failure. Um, I live by the motto that you fail fast and you also fail big. A lot of individuals, and men in particular, tend to fail, then they go back into their man cave, they shut down and go, okay, I need to check, check of everything right now. You know, failure is a great gift that we can all acknowledge and go, okay, this is just part of the process in molding who we are as a man and moving forward. Mm. Well, a lot of people do say that you can't learn without failure. Yeah. How important is it as a learning tool? Well, it's really about strength of character and it's how we actually handle ourselves and manage ourselves in those particular situations. Now, not all of us all of the time are going to handle failure well. Um, I live by the rule that you can crack a tanty for 60 minutes, cry, punch a pillow, do whatever you need to do, but when that 60 minutes is up, get on with it and just get over it and move on. What do I have to do next? Okay. What is the next step? So why is one person successful and another a failure? What, what, what's the difference between those people? Yeah, it's the way that they actually pick themselves up in those scenarios. So are they looking at it from a positive perspective or are they going into that really negative that, you know, this isn't good, this is crap, why does this keep happening to me? There's a certain thought pattern around it. So one thing that individuals can do is go, okay, what are the thoughts that I'm actually having right now around this particular scenario? Do I feel rejected? Do I feel, you know, not acknowledged? And what do I have to do to actually change that? Okay. Who would you suggest is a role model for you in terms of success? Yep, look, I look at individuals such as Richard Branson or even Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So for me, I look at individuals that are authentic, they're willing to stand out, they're no BS, and they'll give anything a shot. Mm -hmm. um, if people are looking to really get out of a rut really quickly, they can look at those role models and go, you know what, I'm just going to embody this character to get through this part of my life. Mm -hmm. And by embodying that character, they actually take, start to take on new traits and they learn a lot quicker and they move forward a hell of a lot faster so too. So it's a case of channeling Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. Or Richard Branson. Or Brady's Oprah, or whoever it might be. Fantastic. All right, so what are the practical steps to success? Yep. In your book. Yep, so we need to look at, first of all, really simple step, what are our goals? Outline them, make them very clear, but also make them very realistic. Don't set them so high that they're completely unachievable and you set yourself up for failure in the first instance. Second of all, we need to do research. So what is it gonna take for us to be able to reach these goals? What do I need to know to be successful in this area? Third step, find your role models. So who are the individuals that you can actually get out to, meet face to face, coffee, sit down and have a chat like what we're doing right now. You know, where were the stumbling blocks for them? How did they overcome it? What did they do next? How did they pick themselves up? What were the key tipping points in their success overall? And do you aim high? Particularly when mentors are concerned, absolutely. You've got to aim high because if you get someone that's only achieving mediocre success, that's where you're going to get to. So we need to take people off of the pedestal and go, you know what, they're just normal people, let's approach them. Um, I don't think there's ever been a case where someone's declined to sit down with a coffee if you're genuine about getting ahead in your field, even if you are a potential competitor in the future. There's no harm in asking. Fantastic. Well, good advice there. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thanks, Adam. Next up on Manscape, we take a look at the wonderful world of paintball and we're getting a lot more serious about it, especially if you're looking to get suited up in your own gear and become a regular player. Here's everything you need to know to get fit and get involved. Well, we've got Hot Shots Army, all the guys here today. We can basically catch up every six weeks to have a hit. Most of these guys have all been playing paintball for a while now, so you know, we all get out there, have a bit of fun, use the, the tactics that we're slowly building up. Well, we tried the uh, Mission Impossible field today, and uh, you know, the guys you know, helped me out with a bit of tactics, you know, a bit of coordinated play, uh, you know, uh, setting up crossfires, that sort of thing. And look, it was just so much better. You know, uh, it's amazing 
how much better this game can be when you've got like-minded people working with you. Mission Impossible is one of the earliest paintball fields Hot Shots has ever constructed. Made from over 3,000 sandbags, this field resembles a military bunker training camp and is featured as backdrops to several movies. With high-rise towers posted at each end of the field, these towers protect each team's base. One force will emerge victorious, but only after they have destroyed the opposition's observation tower. Lead your team of crack commandos to secure the key. If a player gets tagged, they must relinquish the key for another player to grab and complete the mission. But hang on, this is where the mission may be impossible. There is a hyper cannon mounted in each of the observation towers guarding the military base. Made by Australian engineers, each hyper cannon has five rotating barrels ready to deliver a paintball storm to any approaching enemy. To be victorious is to successfully take out the hyper cannon and activate the demolition charge, blowing up the tower with a big bang pyrotechnic. So later on we checked out the Battle Force Pacific field and uh, that's just mayhem, you know, it's, it's trenches, it's tight, it's, it's, it's World War II, what can you say, you know, it, it's, it's just there's dirt and paint flying everywhere, it's tight and yeah, it's really, really good. Battle Force Pacific is made from props purchased from the hit miniseries The Pacific, directed by Steven Spielberg. Battle Force Pacific has elements within the game designed by Hollywood special effects technicians specifically for hot shots. Your senses hit overload before the game even starts. The boat hits the beach and the commander orders you up the beach and into the trenches. The attacking force must fight their way within the trench system and emerge the other side. Push the plunger and blow up the bridge, whereby three huge explosions detonate. So I just played on a village field. Uh, basically the, uh, the objective of the game is that you have two water barrels. The scenario is that you're having a bit of the civil war in this village and your only way to win this war is to battle your way across the field over to the opposing side of the field. Shoot at that water barrel which has a little plaque. Shoot that plaque. Bang goes off, water will fall down from that water tower and you win the game. Look, we had a really great day today. Uh, we won both games and uh, that, that feels really good for me because it means that we're improving, uh, getting better and you know, getting some wins is always, it's always good fun. So even though we, uh, we won the game, it was more a uh, sort of bonding thing, everyone getting together, having a good time, ha coming out, having a hit, um, maybe after the game sharing, sharing a nice uh, beer or something. Stay tuned next week for more thrilling paintball adventures with the team at Hot Shots. Packing tips from Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. Now tip number one, start with a modern lightweight case that doesn't compromise on security. Will one be walking over there? One will be. Tip number two, pack your shoes first at the bottom of the case to stop them crushing the rest of your clothes. Now talking of crushing... Ah, tip number three, roll your clothes, don't fold them to stop them creasing and I'll take care of these later. <laughs> now to make sure you come in well under the scales, grab yourself one of these really lightweight flyweights. Fabulous. For more packing tips, visit antlerluggage.com.au. Men's Health Issues with Elizabeth Chelly. G'day Elizabeth. Hi there Adam. Now, we're talking about social circles today. When yes. you're in a relationship, quite often it's the female in the relationship that does a lot of the social organising, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's yes. going on there? It can work out where she ends up being the social organiser and therefore the one um, organising and arranging the social calendar, which runs the risk of men not developing their own circle of friends. So where I've seen a lot of this problem occur is men coming to me going through a separation. They tend to lose a lot of their social network and social circles because they were so shared with her social circles. Now there's no problem with that overall, but it becomes a problem if he hasn't invested some time and energy into having his own independent circle of friends. And in a relationship, let's face it, it's easy to default and just have one person organise it. Um, the other issue around that is that often women might get a little bit too controlling about his socialising and wants him to do all his socialising with her um, and not necessarily nurturing him being able to have his own social life. Now there are many women that do help that happen and men just want her to do the social organising anyway. So it's really important to encourage you guys be your own social calendar as well. Have your own independent circle of friends because it's important you have that independent space. Okay, so what are some practical steps that people can do to make sure there is that balance in place? Now, one of the things, particularly if you're doing this out of a relationship context, is ensure that you have good date nights with your partner. So at least that part's getting good quality time. 
Have a look at some key people in your circle, particularly men friends that you find you resonate with really well, and just call them up, have a conversation, even if it's about just having a quick five minute call, a touch base conversation, arranging a quick coffee, or even arranging to share a hobby, whether it be going to a game, uh, going out fishing, or sharing some other kind of hobby that you know both of you share. So it's really about quality time. So even if it's once a month, just consider having that connection with someone because it's over weeks and months that that friendship then develops over time and you maintain it in your independent space whilst nurturing your relationship at the same time. What about social media? Is, is social media good enough or not? It's one tool to help you maintain a connection in your social circles, but don't over rely on social media. It's very easy in our busy, time poor kind of life to just use social media and go, oh, that's okay, I've texted or I've Facebooked to them or I've put up a photo, they know what I'm doing and I'll just get on with my life. You need to put a little concerted effort into the social circle, but it doesn't have to be time consuming. Once a month, once every five to six weeks, make it a point to actually catch up in person because there's nothing like a face-to-face -face connection um, to help you down the track. Where it becomes most important is if ever you're facing any concerns down the track or you're stressed out or you've got a problem, it's easier to then call someone that you've got good rapport and trust with and that's going to build when you've had some face-to-face -face contact with them over time. And so that way it helps him manage those stresses without being alone or isolated. So blokes, don't just sit back no. and let it happen. Actually be actively involved in organising your social calendar. Yes, even if she wants to take over the social calendar, make a point of having your own as well. Fantastic. Great advice. Advice, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Same, Adam. Thanks. We've got another Manscaped fashion tip with our fashion stylist, Sally McKinnon of Style Bar Sally. Now, Sally, tell us, what have we got today? Well, today, Robbie, we're going to talk about jean length and in particular, the style of jean that you're wearing today, which is a slim leg jean. Now, with a slim leg jean, you want to avoid excess bunching at the ankle. So the idea is that the jean just sits neatly on top of the shoe without falling over it. But regardless of what style of pant or jean that you're wearing, always make sure you take the appropriate shoes to the tailor. Thanks once again, Sally. Next up, we catch up with the team at Fitness Generation to get some great tips on maximising your workouts. We're here talking fitness and maximising the workout in the home. And to help me, we've got our resident personal trainer, Donna. Now, Donna, we're looking at a Schwinn AC sport bike. Now, tell us some of the benefits of working out in the home. Well, having a spin bike in your home uh, means that it's not weather dependent first thing and also it's very convenient for the whole family so everybody can use it and as you can see Robbie it's adjustable so from the front here front bar down to the back seat yep. so it can be adjusted to any size so it basically fits all and the safety factor also too so if you don't like riding outside you're in your own home and it's safe for you. Tell us some of the benefits and features of this bike. Okay if you're a road cyclist you can either put your cleats on or just wear your normal runners that's no problem at all. It feels just like riding a real bike. It does and we've also got this LCD screen that measures your watts, distance, speed and calories. And I can see here you've also got a, a plug-in for a wireless heart rate monitor, yep. that's fantastic. Yeah, it monitors your heart rate too, yeah now, it's fantastic. One of my favourite things is the fact that you can just turn this knob here and it increases its intensity using magnets. It does, yeah. And the benefit of having the magnets is that you don't have the, the cost of replacing brake pads or even your disc. That's true, yeah. So Donna, tell us how to maximise your workout on a bike. Okay, so once you've adjusted your handlebars, your seat and you're all set, um, you then go to your intensity. So you can either decrease or increase. Now decreasing your intensity is going to be a, a, allow you to actually sprint further and then increasing is like you're doing a hill climb. So it's clearly going to increase your heart rate, cardiovascular, and if you've only got a short period of time, you may want to stick to that. And then if you've got a longer period of time, you can actually extend that, so either increase or decrease. And it's really smooth, I noticed, when I was turning it up or down. It's just a nice it transition is. into different settings. Now to stop, you just push down on this bad boy here, and it's done. It is. I love that. Safety feature, it's great. Yeah. Now it gets really hot and you know I love these things. This is the Extreme Cooling Tower. Now this thing stays cool for up to six hours and is sure to last the rest of your workout, which is fantastic. Now machines like this will typically be found in Genesis gyms or other commercial gyms around the country, but now you can own them in your own home. And if you're interested, visit thefitnessgeneration.com.au and you pick up one of these towers too. Thanks for your time, Donna. That's okay. Now here's your chance to win some fantastic prizes from Manscaped.
There's a Schwinn AC sports bike, courtesy of the fitness generation, featuring adjustable performance handlebars and seat, magnetic resistance brakes and SPD style cleats to simulate an outdoor riding experience. There's also a $1,000 paintball experience for you and your nine mates, courtesy of Hot Shots. Each person will receive free entry, playing gear, tactical gloves to keep, plus 400 rounds courtesy of Hot Shots Paintball in Anarchy, Victoria. There's also a set of three drive light luggage cases courtesy of Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. If you're looking to get fit, there's also a one-on-one -on -one personal training session courtesy of Donna's Fitness Revolution. You'll also win a style consultation in Melbourne from our very own Styled by Sally and a $100 dining voucher courtesy of Sandbar Beach Cafe in Albert Park, Victoria. And to top it off, some best-selling books and CDs from Dr. Elizabeth Chelley and Ben Angel. All you need to do is tell us in 25 words or less why you would like this great prize. Head to manscapetv.com.au to enter. Well, that's it for another great episode of Manscape. Yes, Keita, and still plenty to come in our first season. But if you can't wait until next week's show, jump on our Facebook page or check out our website at manscapetv.com.au. And we'll see you next time right here at the Sandbar Beach Cafe in Middle Park. <laughs>